welcome back. I had also earlier had a conversation with former Governor Ibrahim Shehu Shema, another two-term governor who ended his tenure recently. And like Governor Fashola, he did not contest for a seat in the Senate. I'd asked him, among other things, if he could have done more for Casino State, if he had access to more money than was available from the Federation account. But first, here is a brief biography of Governor Ibrahim Shehu Shema. Governor Ibrahim Shehu Shema was born on 22 September 1957. He attended the College of Arts, Science and Technology Zaria and Ahmadu Bello University Zaria from where he graduated with an LLB in 1983. He later obtained his BL at the Nigeria Law School and a Master of Business Administration also from Ahmadu Bello University. He served as the Chief Legal Executive to the Nigeria National Fertilizer Company, NAFCON, and was principal partner in Shema, Oscar, and Company Legal Practitioners in Lagos. Dr. Shema was the State Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice during Umaru Musa Yaradwa's first term as Governor of Kasina State. He later served as the Deputy National Chairman of the PDP. He became Governor of Kasina State in 2007 and won re-election in 2011. Governor Shema, agriculture is the major occupation of the Kasina people and official statistics show that Agric remains the largest contributor to the Nigerian economy accounting for about 40 percent of GDP. Yet billions of dollars of scarce foreign exchange has been spent on importing food annually and millions of people are still said to be unemployed. Why has it been difficult, as I asked you some time ago, for people to understand that Agric will solve several of our uh, national problems, including food security and, employ and unemployment, among others. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Number one, agricultural policy in Nigeria must have a shift. We must change in the approach to advocating agriculture for years that have not result, you know, resulted into what we expect to see. Essentially, I would want to suggest or recommend that uh, agricultural programs should be designed from bottom up, meaning local governments, state governments, and the federal government must have a common agricultural program they must all connect with. And each sector or segment of governance should have a role to play, define clear role to play, and amount of money that they can contribute in terms of that developmental aspect in which they are connected with. Unless we design agriculture in this way, there is no how we can hope to achieve the type of result we expect to see. Nigeria is vastly an agricultural land. We have cultivable land from first day of January to the last day of December. We have to reactivate our irrigation program. There's no serious agricultural economy that can hope to survive only on rain-dependent agriculture. We should be able to cultivate the land from first day of January to last day of December, meaning year-round agricultural activities. And agriculture, by the way, has the potential of putting money directly into the pocket of the peasant. So agricultural policies and programs have to shift from what we used to have, because what we have been having over the years has not given us the needed results. There is equally the issue of livestock development and growth. There's a huge market in Nigeria and of course, uh, you know, the, the continent for livestock and dairy products, which oftentimes are more important into the country than, uh, you know, we're selling out. So we need to look essentially at all these, uh, you know, parameters and then define a program in which all the segments of governance will participate. Our farmers, on the other hand, are majority subsistence farmers. So we must encourage cooperative groups, extension services, agricultural support services, and other aspects that can build a veritable and solid program on agricultural development and food security in Nigeria and on the African continent. You know, as you said, paradoxically, the most vulnerable and food insecure are found in the rural areas. Um, what were you able to do in Kasina State to make agriculture sustainable and more attractive to farmers? You know, in Katina, after education, agriculture has become our second most important object of governance. And for that reason, we decided to pick on uh, irrigational activities side by side with the rain dependent agricultural programs and livestock development. The first step we took was to look at the existing irrigation schemes in the state and rehabilitated 27 of them and reactivated one of the largest dams we have, the Jibia Dam, for irrigation. And subsequently, the Zobe and Sabke and Mairua dams are equally brought on scheme with the Songhai agricultural programs. So in a nutshell, the irrigation schemes that we had in the state before we came into office were hardly put together, cultivated more than 3,000 hectares. But now over 12,000 hectares are being cultivated through irrigation alone. 
and that's quite a feat in the last uh, you know seven and a half or eight years. And believe you me, if we continue to pay the attention that is required on agriculture, not only Katsina State but Nigeria will continue to be self-sufficient in food production. There is no how you can run away from food production and consumption. With the growth of population in Nigeria and on the continent of Africa and around the globe, food requirement is inevitably growing. And whatever you grow, you can sell. Uh, and to grow agriculture at home, we have to define a program, adopt the Japanese principle of to grow at home, you have to sell abroad. We have to design a program of exporting agricultural produce from all over Nigeria to ready markets abroad, uh, on the African continent and elsewhere. And uh, our own modest efforts in Katsina have shown that with irrigation, you can turn around the economy of the rural farmer because he can be engaged productively for the entire period uh, you know, uh, of there, for irrigation after irrigation for independent agriculture. We have seen what it can do. We bought 340 Mazda Ferguson tractors and sold to farmers at 50% discount. We introduced this uh, animal traction program where we buy oxen, bulls, carts, and other farm implements and give to rural farmers at a very huge discount on loan. And uh, in addition to that, we secure improved variety of seedlings. And uh, uh, we, we bring in extension services for improved techniques of farming. Uh, and we are encouraging establishment of agro-allied industries. So if we go in this pattern, you know, at local government level, at state level, at national level, certainly there will be a marked improvement in the approach and handling of agriculture in Nigeria. Kassina State is said to be one of those states not living beyond its means in, in, a manner of speak, in a manner of speaking. Other states have taken out bonds, which they argue will help them fast track development and so forth. What was it that you had against this method? I have nothing against borrowing. Uh, if people want to borrow, they can borrow. But I did not borrow in Katsina for two fundamental reasons. Number one, the interest rates are cutthroat. I don't see how governments or dwindling economy can borrow money and be able to pay. And if the interest buildup is so large, that is how the economy of the state can go under. If the, the interest rates were low, as is obtained in other advanced democracies, probably one could borrow and do certain projects. And then the second reason is that within our meager resources, we felt we can manage it and achieve the kind of results we have achieved today. And as it is, you can clearly see that Katsina has not borrowed a couple since the beginning of our administration to date. And we have not failed in delivering dividends of democracy to our people. I hear bonds being raised by other states, loans being taken. That is okay, because everybody will manage his own situation the way he sees fit. But in Katsina, we choose to do what we did, and uh, the results are there for everyone to see. What will the incoming administration have to do? They have to make their own plans. They have to design and define their own programs. What would you recommend? And the direction. My recommendation is that the, if they can sustain this feat of not taking money to do projects, they should be able to do that. But if they cannot, then that's the decision entirely. But my take is that they, as much as possible, they should not venture into borrowing. <coughs> because borrowing for a young state like Asena, that revenue income is f essentially federation account and uh, IGR, you know, that's not more than one billion naira will not be helpful to the management of the state. Other states manage to raise their uh, um, IGR. Lagos State, for example, I mean, there's reason room for comparison, but Lagos State, for example, managed to raise its IGR to about 23 billion naira a month. Uh, what, what room is there for <coughs> improvement in, in Katsina State, and were these options uh, not looked at? Oh, you know, in every major nation of the world, the real source of income for each country the real source is taxation. That I can tell you. More than 70% of most major nations of the world income come from taxation, not from oil. So managed properly, the tax structure in Nigeria can be able to generate much more income than what we see. Lagos has just demonstrated that example. In Katsina, the story is a bit different. Lagos has so many industries to tax on. Lagos has so many uh, you know, programs and projects that can bring in income easily especially the existing commercial, um, being the commercial nerve center of Nigeria. So you cannot compare Lagos with any location. Maybe probably Kano will come next. But Katsina is essentially an agrarian and civil service state. So that's why our income can nowhere be compared to that. But now as we are gingering and encouraging the economy towards commerce and industry, 
that is the platform upon which we can build it. Talking about gingering the economy, I know that you, your administration spent a lot of time and efforts and resources trying to um, get foreign investors and local investors into Kassana State. What, how, how has that worked out and what has been the result? It is working very well. We did so much advertorials on television, uh, national television, inviting people to come to Kassana, and people have come. People are setting up small cottage industries already. And some Germans have come to partner with us in the Neem processing plant. And others are trying to set up, uh, you know, uh, uh, what you call leather factories. And uh, we have investors who are interested to work with us in electrification, that is in solar development of solar power plants. And so many people are showing interest. Others are coming into agriculture sector. They want to partner with the state government to some extent to produce uh, fruits and vegetables. The Songhai Farm Initiative is a project that we are bringing in other people to come and work with us, and it's a very successful venture. So inviting invitation to foreign investors you know, will always be hinged on conducive environment. And Katsina has a very peaceful and conducive environment. And more people, people are coming, and I'm sure they keep coming into Katsina. You know, former Governor Donald Duke recently told me that even though the Constitution ensures that the body of an incumbent leave, leaves government house, only that man can ensure that his soul follows. I'm preparing very well. I look forward to taking a break, enjoy my family life, and reflect and plan whatever I want to do in the future. That's the way I take it. I'm grateful to God he gave me the opportunity to serve myself for eight years. I'm grateful to him he guided me to do the kind of things we did for the progress and development of our state and our nation. There are no regrets whatsoever. There are no regrets, but gratitude to Almighty Allah. The opportunity I had for eight years and uh, the support I got from my people in Kazan State and the developmental strides we have achieved are things that for a long time to come, people will always remember. So I'm a fulfilled man as far as the administration of my state is concerned. And uh, about my future plans, yes, politics is there. The legal practice, which is my primary constituency, is there. And uh, there are so many other options. I'll look at them and decide in which direction I want to travel. Governor Ibrahim Sheu Shema, we thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And that's our program View from the Top. I thank you for watching. Please join us again next time when View from the Top returns. I thank you again and I wish you a good day.